Yo Wagwan, hope you're having a great day. If you want your loops to sound better, be created quicker, and be a smooth experience for your customers, this is the video for you. I've already made an in-depth video on how to make loops from scratch, so go watch that if that's what you need. In fact, go watch that regardless because that's gonna help you out a lot. But this video is gonna reveal how to use my pop trap loop mixing template to get the best results and start making better sounding loops fast. This is gonna reveal the main techniques I use to make loops and the workflow you should use to get the most out of this template and get your loops sounding professional. If you haven't got your pop trap loop mixing template yet, use the link in the description or go to jcarterray.com forward slash pop trap fl let's get into it here's our loop making template when you actually come in here none of the effects will be turned on this is to prevent fl studio glitching because it will if you've got too many effects on fl studio will glitch up and it will not allow you to use it properly or crash and all that sort of stuff so that's why all the effects are not on when you come in this is the first reason why you want to use the effects of each track and then make sure the effects are turned on off before you move on. I'll show you how that works very soon. The second reason you need to have your effects turned off before you move to the next instrument is because if you export your loop with effects turned on, your loop will export with a delay, which means it will shift out of time for anyone who buys your loops. This is bad news. This loop template and this workflow guide will save you from these issues and have your loop sound a professional in half the time. Before moving to the next step, the first thing you want to do is enable the effect on the pad reverb. Next, the first thing you want to do when using this template or the second thing because you enabled your pad reverb is you want to create your melody using the FL keys section and then you want to pitch it up. So let's say this is your melody. First thing you want to do is control all, pitch it up. Then you copy this to the chord piano, which will be your main instrument. So you'll replace this with whatever main instrument you want to use. The main instrument I'm using is this. Let's play this back. Now what you want to do is turn on the effects on the main chorus melody track. Then you want to turn on RC20 and this is what we get. Next thing you want to do is you want to actually bounce this melody down. So we'll select this, then press Control, Alt and C. Use these settings for best results. Then we'll normalize this. We'll use generic bleeding. We'll put it back through the mixer to the same mixer track. So it's main chorus melody again and pitch it down. And then we'll turn off RC20 retro color. At this point, we can listen back and this is what we get. And at this point, you generally want to do your EQing and get rid of any harsh resonances. In order to do that, we'll do EQ sweeping. So you see that? That's super harsh. We definitely don't want that. And then I can see another harshness over here. So we'll get rid of that. Cool, that's perfect. Now we're gonna bounce it down one more time and then we're gonna normalize it, send it back through the mixer, turn off these effects and then turn down the volume. Go to generic bleeding on our declicking mode. I will generally want my melody to hit around the word chorus. So that's perfect. That's exactly where I'd want it to be. Now, if on your second bounce, you haven't gotten rid 
of all the harshness, then you can always go back through the effects a second and third time, fourth time if you really need to. But be careful with that. And in that case, if you go through it too many times, you'd want to turn off these main EQs and you just want to create a new one to specifically get rid of those harsh frequencies. Otherwise, your melody is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. Now, you want to follow this method for every other instrument except for the vocal chops and the analog pad. And quickly, just so you understand what these main melody reversed things are for, basically, it's for if you reverse the melody. So if we use this, okay, we go to our main chorus melody and we turn on our effects and we use fruity send here, we enable that and then we turn off this main melody, we'll then get a reverbed version of the melody because this fruity send sends this melody to the reverb. So we'll bounce this down and then with this reverb version, we can normalize it, go to generic bleeding and send it to our main chorus melody reversed, add our effects. Turn it down a little bit. Generally, it will be pitched up. And then we can reverse it. And then to actually reverse everything, we'd use shift to cut everything up like so. And then we just move it back into order so that it works with the rest of our chord pattern. And then this is what it'll sound like. and then we can bounce it down again. But usually I do this before the second bounce down. We do it after the first bounce down before we pitch anything down so that it's still at the high melody and it doesn't have as many artifacts. So keep that in mind, but that is how you would create these reversed versions of the melodies. It's super, super easy if you use the template. Remember, just turn on Fruity Send and bounce it down with the reverb and then make sure you turn off the track so that you're not getting both the normal information and the Fruity Send because you don't want both. And then turn off Fruity Send when you're done, turn back on your actual melody and then you can use this reverse melody to just have some background sound like this. But that's that, remember to turn off all the effects and bounce everything down so that you don't have effects still on. You basically follow this method for everything else. So chord up, main chorus, chord texture, everything you put it up an octave, bounce it down, put it through the mixer twice, and that will get you some great results. The only things that you won't do this with is the vocal chops and the analog pad or the verse pad as it's named over here, verse pad, verse melody, okay? So let me show you how you deal with the vocal chop. First, you'd create your vocal chop sequence. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm just gonna show you how the mixing would actually work. You'd create your vocal chop sequence. Let's pretend that this is a vocal chop sequence. What you do instead of going up in octave and bouncing it down is you'd turn on the effects, you'd enable the EQ effects and the reverb effect, and then you bounce it down, then you pitch it down, then you send it back through the effects, turn off the reverb effect, and turn on little altar boy down here. I believe this is the right one. Let's quickly check. Yeah, this gives you the high octave double. So then you turn on the high octave double, then you bounce it down again, and then you can turn off all the effects and send it back through the mixer. That's how that works. Sometimes you might need to use a compressor if some chops are louder than others. And before the second bounce is a good time to do that. But you can also come back if needed. Now for the verse pad slash verse melody, what you want to do is send your stuff to the mixer, turn on the effects, and then you want to enable delay or of course EQ, reverb, and RC20 and the imager. Then you want to bounce it down. Then you want to turn off RC20, delay, reverb, and the imager. Then you want to pitch it down, send it back to the mixer, 
and then you want to do any any extra EQing that you need to do if there's any harshness or anything like that then bounce it down again and then you're done lastly you want to arrange your loop like this I've already got everything set up for you in this loop arrangement so you got your intro here then your verse here then your pre-chorus and then your chorus so set that up how you would if you was going to make a beat and then you'll import all the different elements that you used in the beat one by one. So this would be our main chords and then we'd have our reverse chords here and then we'd have our chord pad, our chord texture, our chord up reversed, our analog pad, our vocal chop chord up and then at the end, we'd have every single element of the beat in here so that we can export our stems, okay? The reason why you wanna do this is you wanna have the main version of your loop that people can just download your loop and just immediately add drums and then Bob's your uncle, they're done. They've got the intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. They can cut at the verse and then basically copy that over and then they've got a full song or they can go to the second half of the loop and cut where they want to cut so that they've got the specific parts of the loop that they want to add. Of course, you can change these names. You can right click, go to rename and all that sort of stuff. If you want to do that, you can remove these by deleting, by right clicking. Watch my video on how to use markers if you need more information on how to use these. But this is just a really easy setup so that you know where to put everything and it's really easy for you to create your full loops. Let me actually show you one that I created a little bit earlier. Okay, so this is the type of glitch that I'm talking about that will happen if you do not turn off the effects. Look, look at what's happening. FL will just not allow you to do what you need to do but let's come back into this so this is a loop with everything set up correctly this is generally how it would be set up with these down here these are all grayed out because i've already bounced it down into this which is our next step once you arrange your loop you want to activate the effect on the melody bus like so and bounce your full loop down by selecting everything and then using Control alt and c and then once that's bounced down, obviously you turn the effect off and then you'll get this. And then at this point, you wanna double click that, normalize it and set your volume. I like to set my volume to about minus 16. like so then make sure all your effects are off like reverb and anything you generally want it to be off then you can go to file go to export go to wave you should know how to export your files if you don't go watch my video on how to export files in fl studio i think i've got one on that once you export it then you want to bring your loop back in to fl into this project to check to see if it's got any wild delays if it's not looking super similar to this and it's maybe starting over here or something like that then you want to bounce it again and make sure that you're not getting any delays then you want to export your stems i definitely have a video on how to export stems so you'd want to create a loop over here add all your elements and then go and export as stems to make it easier for customers to use your different loop parts if they don't want to chop up the full loop. And after you've exported your loop, you can also use this template to actually make a beat from your loop. All you need to do is turn on the effects for all the drum section. So that's from clap to clap reverb send and then you want to turn on uh, foley effects and percussion loops and the riser of course. I would also rearrange all this so that you can have full control over these parts so i would like get rid of this and then paste it back down so that you can move it around and do all that sort of stuff so that you're not locked in to the way that the loop is actually arranged but honestly you probably won't change this up because you did arrange this loop how you would make it into a beat so all you're going to do at this point is turn on the effects on your drums and just add drums now if you haven't got your pop trap loop mixing template yet if you're on the pop trap loop mixing template page product page then grab it ASAP. It's going to save you a lot of time and it's going to make your loop sound way better and have you creating loops way faster. But if you're on YouTube, go to jcartaray.com forward slash poptrapfl to go and grab that. Now, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.